Hey, I'm Dr. Jen. I am a health and wellness coach, and I specialize in helping people safely navigate benzo withdrawal. I have a doctorate in psychology, postdoc studies of social neuroscience. I am certified from Cornell University in plant-based nutrition, and I've done a deep dive into the gut microbiome with a masterclass with Dr. Will Bolsowitz, who's a leading gastroenterologist. But most important, I think, the credential that is probably carries the most weight with everybody watching is I am a benzo survivor. I lived through my own recovery from taking a benzodiazepine for about 18 years, taking it as prescribed. So today's video is going to be about what we wish friends and families in the medical community knew about this whole benzo withdrawal experience. This video might get a little long, so you might want to pause it now, go get yourself a nice drink, something not alcoholic, <laughs> a nice beverage, a little snack, and come back, hit play, you know, get comfortable, curl up, get play. I'll try to make it as short as possible, but there's a lot to unpack. And if I need to make a couple of videos and break it down, into more bite-sized pieces, I can do that. I know in the past I've done videos what uh, friends and families wish that they knew, but it's time that we do another one. So, here we go. I think what we wish that we, that people knew is that this is real. We're not making it up. We don't need too much attention. Uh, we don't have a new disorder or a new psychiatric something or another. Uh, it isn't our old stuff. This is real. The drug works by doing some things with the GABA receptors. That's the inhibitory system, the calming system. But the brain doesn't like what the drug is doing. And so it starts to downregulate. It, it doesn't work anymore. It's not really available. And when that happens, we are going to reach tolerance withdrawal, meaning we need more of the drug to have the same sort of efficacy. And it means that when we try to come off the drug that we will probably have withdrawal symptoms. Now, to make this whole thing even more complicated than it already is, about half the people that take a benzodiazepine will not be harmed by them. Science does not, does not know why that is. We're assuming it's some sort of a DNA anomaly that, you know, like some people's brain have like a drawbridge that says, come on, you know, <laughs> come on in. And other people's, you know, the drawbridge stays solid and they don't get hurt. So we don't know why that is, but we know about half the people that take a benzodiazepine get damaged and they have tolerance withdrawal and or withdrawal syndrome symptoms as they're tapering, and then they have this whole withdrawal syndrome after the drug has left their body, and that syndrome is called BIND, benzodiazepine-induced neurological dysfunction. So the first thing we want people to know is, yes, this is a real thing, and it is, to one degree or another, a medical kind of crisis because we are really sick and benz withdrawal. It affects us in body, mind, and spirit. Now, if somebody has cancer, we feel bad for them. And we know, ooh, cancer, bad. You know, here, let me break, bake you a casserole and, you know, let me help in whatever way I can. And people generally going through treatment, they look sick, you know. So we have a cultural um, understanding of different types of illnesses. There's very little cultural understanding about benzo withdrawal or bind, because for one, the medical community is still so vastly uneducated about it, sadly. I have helped some psychiatrists <laughs> go through it. I've helped some general practitioners go through it. I've helped many, many um, therapists, you know, licensed psychologists go through it. So the, the word is getting out into the medical community a little bit more, but it's not, it's not just a given yet in the community. So we want we, we, we want people to know this is a real thing, and it is to one degree or another a medical crisis. We are very sick in body, mind, and spirit. We're not making it up. It's a real thing. 
The other thing that we want people to know is that we don't necessarily look sick, but we still are. Many become bedridden. Uh, many people have severe pain. I mean, severe pain. Muscle weakness, muscle atrophy, vision is impaired, hearing is impaired. We can get tinnitus, we can get hyperacusis where everything's really loud. Uh, the vision issues, th there are so many to, to list. Mouth, uh, teeth pain, feeling like your teeth are going to burst out of your head. Uh, you know, severe pain. A lot of people have had teeth pulled or root canals that were needless because of the pain um, that comes from benzo withdrawal. We can have uh, weakness, dizziness, vertigo, or just disequilibrium. Um, lose a lot of weight insomnia, severe insomnia. And some of the, the, the real common symptoms are insomnia, severe anxiety, severe panic, what we call organic fear. You just feel fear. You don't know why. Intrusive thoughts that are just, oh, they're, they can be so um, horrific. And there's so much more and we can easily get triggered. So we're in this state and it's affecting body, mind, and spirit because our body's lost the ability to calm itself down. GABA is the break, glutamate's the gas. So we've got way too much glutamate activity, too much excitatory you know, going on, not enough inhibitory. So we want people to know that we are doing our best, but we are struggling with something that affects us on every front that makes us a human being. The way we think, our belief system, the way we feel, our behavior, our perceptions, sounds, it affects all the senses, all of the senses. And so we're in a hyper vigilant, hyper aroused, hyper excitatory state through no fault of our own. Speaking of no fault of our own, it's really important that people understand that, and, and I've done a video on this just, just yesterday, that we're not addicts, we're chemically dependent, and we got here because we trusted a uh, medical personnel who wasn't educated about the dangers and damages of benzos. So we're here because we trusted someone that, you know, we've been trained that we can trust. We can trust the medical community. So we're here through no fault of our own. And we really are doing the very best we can. And I know that taking care of or being friends with or loving someone going through Ben's withdrawal is very taxing. It's one of the reasons that I have a whole group in my support group, Heal with Dr. Jen, just for caregivers. They get their own attention and their own, their own group and their own education and support. And one of the things that I know that can make it so exhausting to care for somebody in Ben's withdrawal is that we are focused on Ben's withdrawal 24 hours a day. It's all we talk about, it's all we think about. Our whole world becomes eh, just benzo withdrawal. That's just another symptom <laughs> of benzo withdrawal uh, because of that phenomenon of state driving story. What your autonomic nervous system is either in a connect state, which is a parasympathetic ventral vagal response. That's our default. That's where we want to be. We're calm. We're confident. We're curious. We're kind. We're compassionate. It's an outward focus. We can make good life and love affirming decisions. Or just the opposite, the protect state, sympathetic fight or flight or parasympathetic dorsal vagal freeze, where we're just in overwhelm. So state drive story. The state of your nervous system is fueling your thoughts and feelings. With a broken nervous system, it's really important that our friends and family and the medical community know that state's driving story and we are going to be most of the day and night in a protect state. And if state's driving story all the time, which it is, it means that we're going to have really negative thoughts and feelings, catastrophic thoughts and feelings. And we're just going to be like dialed in, like just clenching onto everything benzo withdrawal. It becomes our whole world. And we're not happy about that. It's important that you know that. We're not happy about that. We know that we are so self-centered, self-focused. We don't want to be that way, but it's another symptom. Just like we don't want to be bedridden. We don't want to be unable to work. We don't want to have burning skin and, and you know, just all the laundry list of symptoms. We don't want that. But that is one of the things that often happens when we're going through benzo withdrawal is this self-centered, self-focused, 
um, point of view and talking incessantly about what we're experiencing. And I know it's over. It's overwhelming for people. It's trust me. It's more overwhelming for us living through it. And it's really important that that we understand that friends and family, especially spouses, therapists, marriage counselors, understand we're not using our benzo withdrawal as a weapon against a loved one. We're not using as an excuse to get out of, um, you know, family obligations. We're not using it as an excuse to not participate, um, uh, you know, with our, with our partners um, sexually. We really are unwell and we are doing our best. So it's so important especially people in the, you know, in the helping field of any type of therapy really understand what benzo withdrawal and, and bind is like for somebody experiencing it. That's why in February, fingers crossed, touch wood, whatever else you need to do, rub your head, pat your stomach, I don't know. I'm rolling out a course for professionals who want to know Ben's withdrawal, and I'm hopefully going to get it approved for continuing education units, and certainly it will be certified by me that you have gone through this course, so you know a little bit more. But especially if you're if you're in the the helping field uh, as any type of therapist, it's really important that you understand this whole syndrome. Otherwise, you might misdiagnose or mis hyphen treat one of your clients or patients. We're, we're, not, we're not using this to get out of anything. We're not using it as a boundary. Oh, you know, you can't, you can't do this. Uh, we're not using it as payback in spite of, oh, my Lord, <laughs> we really are unwell. We really are unwell. We're doing our very best to get well. But let me tell you a little bit, friends and family and medical community, let me give you a little sliver, a little insight, a little TikTok <laughs> version of, of what it's like to go through benzo withdrawal. You lose sight of who you are. And I know it's easy to say that, like, oh yeah, whatever. Uh, no, you don't know who you are. You lose touch with your talents, your belief systems, you know, what brings joy. What You lose touch with your core self. I used to tell everybody, I feel like I've been eviscerated. I had no idea who Jennifer was anymore. And I came back online. I called it coming back online in bits and pieces and very slowly. And I will remember to the day I draw my last breath, the moment I had evidence that I was coming back online. And I remember just sobbing, just sobbing. Going through Ben's withdrawal is the one of the most horrific things a person can go through. I truly believe it is the worst medical crisis a person can experience, especially people that have really intense withdrawal syndromes. I've talked to people who've gone through cancer and said, I'd rather be battling cancer again than go through this. You know, open heart surgery, all sorts of different illnesses and diseases, and, and they all say, my gosh, those were a walk in the park compared to this. And please know this, our prior psychiatric diagnosis, whether that was, you know, it was insomnia, we had panic, we had anxiety, whatever it was, pales in comparison to what we are experiencing now. I would have given everything to just trade my benzo withdrawal experience for my old, quote unquote, pre-existing anxiety and panic disorder. I would have given it up in a heartbeat. I would have gladly said, let me take that over this. So we don't know who we are. We literally don't know who we are. We're so lost inside of ourselves. And because state is driving stories so hard, 
We, we can't come up with a positive thought if we tried. So it's all doom and gloom and catastrophe. We're never going to get well. We're the worst of the worst. You know, maybe other people got well, but I'm not going to get well. Or we spend hours ruminating all the crappy things we did in the past or all the crappy things that somebody did to us in the past. Or we're time traveling way into the future. You know, what if this happens? Oh my gosh, what if that? What blah, blah, blah. It's all doom and gloom, catastrophizing. And we can't help it because state's driving story. And you can tell somebody in Ben's withdrawal, it's going to be okay. And they might go, oh yeah, okay. And they kind of settle down for a few seconds. But then they're right back in it. There's not much that brings us relief. Can you imagine suffering from something that you cannot escape from? And you know that you've got to go through this torture day after day after day until you get well. And there's no way anybody can tell you how long that's going to be. Can you imagine being in that place? It's hard to wrap your head around that type of torture, but that is what we in Benza Withdrawal go through. So friends and family and medical community, when we say we're suffering, by God, we are suffering. And we're not clingy and needy and despairing because we're weak or because we need too much attention. We are desperately afraid and we need reassurance. We need you to tell us every second of every day we're going to be okay. And that's exhausting, I know. But that is what we need. It's truly what we need. It's why I created the live support group that I have here with Dr. Jen, so people can get more ongoing support. So hopefully, you know, they can give their friends and family a little bit of a break. All right. I know this video is getting long. How many minutes? Oh, we are. We're getting long into it. All right. One thing it's really important to know, um, please do not tell your, your, your loved one or your friend or your patient, your client who's going through benzo withdrawal to go to a detox center. <sighs> Worst way to get off of a benzo. Now, if you've got a medical reason that if you don't get off your benzo quickly, you know, it could be a cat true catastrophe. Yes, then detox is warranted. But that those cases are so rare. You have to get off this drug, these drugs, these benzodiazepines very, very, very slowly. Otherwise, you shock the brain and the symptoms are just, you know, beyond measure. So please don't tell someone to go get off the drug in a detox because more than 90 something percent people who go that route end up reinstating because not because they're weak or they're addicted. It's because the withdrawal symptoms are so grotesque. So please don't tell them to go to detox. Please don't encourage them to start taking other psych meds. What's the defini definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over, but expecting a different outcome. We got in this position because we're on a psych med. We're not going to get out of this position because of a psych med. All psych meds can be damaging and dangerous long term. So especially there are some that doctors love to give for people in benzo withdrawal. And then when you finally get through benzo withdrawal, guess what? You got to go through another withdrawal of that adjunct medication. So please don't tell your loved one, go to, de you know, go to a detox, get off quickly or get on some other meds. Um, and please do try to educate yourself about this whole phenomenon. Because if you get educated, you're going to know lots more about what works and what doesn't work. Because it's really hard on us when somebody gives us, one, unasked for advice, and it's advice that we have to defend ourselves and say, but no, 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 that we know in the benzo community, after decades of people going through this, and now with the internet, you know, more, excuse me, information's being shared, you know, all this anecdotal evidence, we know that that won't work. We're already struggling, <laughs> to say the least. So to have somebody that we respect and love maybe even look up to, tell us to do something that we know in the community isn't a good idea. It can just be so demoralizing. I can't tell you how much it hurts. And then we've got to defend ourselves. And, and that feels terrible. So if you would please educate yourself about this phenomenon, that would be wonderful. Friends, family, and doctors. 
February, I've got a you know course for professionals. If family want to take it, they're you know they're more than welcome. If you're if you're a loved one watching this video and you want support because it's hard on you, because I know it is, I've got I've got my support group. You just want to know more about how to deal with, you know, your friend, your family member, your loved one, or a client or a patient. Book a session with me. I'm happy to educate. So please know. This is truly a difficult thing to get through. And it takes quite some time for some of us. And we're not weak. In fact, we are the strongest people on the planet to every day wake up and face such intense fear and anxiety and lack of being able to, to concentrate, to watch anything on TV, to listen to music, um, you know, to be in a conversation, to even be around people can be so overwhelming. To deal with all this onslaught one after another, every waking moment of every single day, I tell you, we are superheroes. There's nothing weak about us at all. And we are doing our very, very, very best. And what we need friends and family and the medical community to understand is that this whole phenomenon needs to be brought into the light of day so that there's better support for people going through it because there are no cures there's no medicine there's no therapy there's no you know electric shock therapy or a magnetic thing or whatever time is what heals us the body knows how to heal we can stack the cards in our favor eat right which is a whole food plant-based diet move enough stress less love well that's why I teach my clients polyvagal theory so that they can understand how their autonomic system works. And I explain love well isn't about feeling love, although that's wonderful. It's being love. And there's like 15 different things that we can um, gear our life towards that actually help grow a region in our brain um, that, that just totally is the bouncer for anxiety and depression and it helps our gut brain access it helps our immune system i mean we're just going to be so much happier and healthier if we live in this these particular ways of being in the world that's the fourth cornerstone of love well so we can utilize the four cornerstones to stack the cards in our favor to heal more quickly and to heal completely and to go on to live great lives but there are no treatments that lift somebody out of benzo withdrawal so it's really helpful if people understand this you know phenomenon and we bring more light to it so that in the future hopefully the medical personnel that are writing these prescriptions are going to be more educated about this and think twice before giving somebody a benzodiazepine for more than just a couple of days so we're all in this together and we need as we're going through benz withdrawal we need support we need understanding we need a boatload of compassion um you know we need safety safety is the prescription for absolutely everything that is what keeps our autonomic nervous system over in that ventral vagal uh state that parasympathetic ventral vagal response called the connect state so we need to feel safe so the minute if you're a friend or family or medical personnel therapist what have you the minute you say something that is going to put somebody on the defensive you've lost them they're no longer in the connect state they're in the protect state that works for every human being just not people in benzo withdrawal and i have seen some therapists do a lot of damage to people in benzo withdrawal not because they're bad people or they're bad therapists they just aren't educated that's really what is at the heart of all this is there's so much lack of education and knowledge about the truth about these drugs so as somebody who went through it and it took me years to recover lost all my money you know ran through all my savings I was hospitalized a handful of times um bedridden couldn't think uh I, and I couldn't take care of myself and I lived alone uh used a walker then a cane you know slowly slowly got my life back together you know as somebody who has lived through this I know how awful it is and I'm passionate about helping people understand this doesn't have to happen to people anymore we live in <laughs> we live in 2022 close to 2023 
There is so much education now, information about these drugs. The FDA even put a black box label on them, for heaven's sakes. The prescriptions that are being handed out for more than a couple of days, doctors need to think about that. They need to really think about that. And the therapists that don't understand this and are diagnosing us with OCD, um, borderline personality, schizoid, whatever, uh, severe panic and anxiety, stop, stop it, stop it. We're in benzo withdrawal. And yes, we present with all these, you know, things, but we don't have those things. It's benzo withdrawal or bind. So I guess at the end of the day, I'm saying, please get educated. Please stop hurting us more. We are already hurting. We're already damaged beyond what any human being can wrap their head around to think a human being can experience. This is torture for some of us, for many of us. Be kind. Please be kind. Get educated. Please. Not just to help a friend or family, you know, a loved one get through this, but to be a ripple out in the world. So maybe one of your coworkers one day is saying, yeah, I've had this anxiety. My doctor's going to put me on Xanax or Ativan or Klonopin or, or Valium. And you'll go, oh, wait a minute. Wait, you might want to rethink that. You know, my wife or my child or my mother, or my father, or my cousin, my aunt, my uncle, you know, whatever. My next door neighbor went through something really horrific. I don't want you to go through that. I hope that I've touched on enough of the points. If I haven't, I'll make another one. I know what, we're now at, you know, almost a half an hour. Maybe somebody who's watching this will be kind enough to make some timestamps for this. That would be great. And if you need shorter versions, I'll make shorter versions. 2023, y'all, I'm making more videos and making some more shorts. I'm, <sighs> what was that movie network? I'm mad as hell and I'm not taking it anymore. Yeah, I'm really frustrated that in this day and age, I keep getting new clients because doctors keep handing this stuff out. And it breaks my heart that family members, through no fault of their own, don't understand. And they're making our recovery more challenging than it needs to be. Because they don't understand. Not bad people, just uneducated. The truth will set you free. And the knowledge about these drugs and the knowledge about the damage and the dangers will set us all free. Please join me in becoming someone who is educated about these drugs and you are willing to help people who've been hurt by these drugs and you are also willing to just keep an eye out for when you hear about people maybe going to be put on these drugs or on these drugs and they want to get off. And if you, as a Anybody who's helping someone go through benzo withdrawal, bind, whatever that role is, and you need some support emotionally, I'm here for you. You want to get educated? I'm here for you. And those of you watching that are going through benzo withdrawal and bind, let's close as we always do. Are you ready? I am safe. I am healing. I will recover one more time. I'm safe. I am healing and I will recover because that is the outcome for all of us. You will get well. Till next time, please take good care.